Hello and welcome to this module on system hacking. Let's see what we'll be covering. We'll start with what this module is all about and we'll follow that with how do we do system hacking and then what are the goals of system hacking and finally we'll finish off with what tools we'll be using in the demo a little later on. So what is this module all about? Let's see. It is an overview of the last three phases of a penetration test. So think of this module as an introductory module to the rest of the gaining access, maintaining access and covering your tracks modules that follow on after this one. So if you remember the phases of a penetration test are reconnaissance, scanning, gaining access, maintaining access and covering tracks. We did reconnaissance during footprinting, we did scanning during scanning and enumeration. Now we're starting to look at gaining access, maintaining access and covering tracks. So the purpose of this module is to cover the workflow that you're going to take to gain access, maintain access and cover your tracks. Footprinting, scanning and enumeration were all about getting the big picture of the target. In other words, all the information you could possibly get about the target environment, what systems were running, ports open, etc, etc. This module is about getting the big picture about the practical workflow you're going to use in the actual penetration test. So, how do we do this? Well, we start with the target. We've got all the information about the target, which we did during reconnaissance and scanning. Now we need to, first of all, gain access to that target or the target environment. Then we need to escalate our privileges. So if we gain access as a normal user, we'd obviously want to escalate our privileges to an administrative user so that we can get access to more information and more systems, more data, etc. Then we want to execute our apps. We want to put key loggers on the network. We want to install backdoor so we can get access later on and maybe run a few um, packet sniffing exercises to try and gather more usernames and passwords. Then we want to hide our apps and hide our access so that we could come back at a later point and maybe exfiltrate more data or change a few more system settings, etc, etc. And then finally, we would want to cover our tracks and make sure that the log files are clean so that they can't find out that we've been there and basically erase any trace that we were actually in the system at all. Let's look at each of these in a little more detail. How do we gain access? Well, probably the easiest way to get access to a system is to get a username and password. So how do we get a username and password? Well, social engineering. Phishing attacks are a very good example of this. We could eavesdrop, listening to people or shoulder surfing as they call it, watching people typing their passwords is another easy way of getting a password. Obviously you'd need to have access to the user to do that. Brute force. Here you'd use an automated tool or script to try and guess every possible combination of a password um, on a direct system. Obviously this is very very noisy and can be picked up by um, intrusion detection systems, etc. Another form of automated attack using a script is a dictionary attack. <clears throat> In a dictionary attack, you'd use a list of words, commonly used password words, um, and there are a lot of those out on the internet. And default passwords. As per the previous module, where I demonstrated and showed you where to go find default passwords, there are many times where sysadmins do not change the default password on a system. If you are unable to gain a username and password, the next phase would probably be for you to try and get access via exploiting vulnerabilities. Now these could be a system vulnerability or social engineering where you actually exploit vulnerabilities in the human resources of the organization which once again talks to the social engineering at the top here. And then finally, if you cannot get any of those, you would need physical access so that you could have access to the machine to try and get the admin user and password on that. And for that, you need access to the hardware and access to the physical site. 
Once you've gained access, you now need to move to privilege escalation. So how do we do escalation? In other words, how do we get an admin username and password if all we have is a normal username and password? Well, we do that by exploiting internal systems. So there are multiple times where systems on the internet aren't exactly the same as systems on the internal network. There may be internal systems that are never exposed to the internet. And sometimes exploiting these internal systems actually helps you get an admin username and password. You could also use malware such as spyware that you can install on the system that tries and, and gets admin usernames and passwords. <clears throat> but once you're on the network, it's a lot easier to install spyware than if you still have only access to internet facing systems. You could use packet sniffing um, if you're on the network and you have access to the switch where you can set promiscuous mode, you could sit on the network and sniff all the traffic and look for usernames and passwords in that traffic if they haven't encrypted it. And then finally, there's also social engineering again. But social engineering is a little bit easier if you have a username and password of a normal user, it's a lot easier to social engineer an admin user than if you were out on the internet. And once you've escalated access, we move on to the next phase, which is executing your apps. Obviously, you'd want to execute your apps as an administrator rather than as a normal user. In many environments, normal users cannot execute apps, and that's probably the reason why you'd want to have an admin account. And what apps will we be executing? Well, we want to put Trojans and spyware on the network, perhaps, to exfiltrate data, or a Trojan for a backdoor, or to gain more user accounts, or whatever it is that the ultimate aim of the penetration test is. We also want to put keyloggers so that we can gather even more usernames and passwords and maybe some other useful information that you might want to be able to see via what people are typing. And then finally, we want to put in backdoors so that we can maintain access once we have left the system post the initial gaining access phase of the penetration test. Once we've executed our apps, we want to hide them. In other words, we don't want to leave our apps lying around where everyone can find them. And there are two ways that we pretty much look at hiding apps both in the system hacking phase. Rootkits, which is a special form of malware which actually hides other malware on uh, systems by making sure that it doesn't isn't listed in the services, processes and a whole bunch of other stealthy methods that rootkits use to hide malware. And then alternate data streams, which is basically a way of hiding software within software. And it works very, very well in a, in a Windows environment. Now that we've hidden our apps, the next stage is to cover our tracks. And how do we cover our tracks? Well, we clean up the logs. So to be a good penetration tester, you have to be an excellent log file analyzer because you want to go through the logs and make sure that every entry that has tracked you is deleted or hidden in some way, shape or form. And then finally, we want to clean our path. If we've created directories and used software, etc., etc., we want to make sure that none of that stuff is visible or, and that it is hidden. And you do that via rootkits and alternate data streams. Okay, so now that we've gone through the phases, what are the actual goals of system making? Well, let's go through them in phased approach. First, we gain access. Then, we exfiltrate data or alter data. Leave a back door so that we can get in at some later point, should we need to. And then finally, remove all traces that you have been on the system. So, let's see what tools we'll be using. Well, in the demo that's coming up, I'm going to show you a tool called Hydra, which is a password brute force guessing tool. And I'm also going to show you a demo on Metasploit Sesh Armitage, which is a tool that exploits systems and allows you to get root shells and root access to vulnerable systems on the network.